name is Malcolm Leverett. I'm a physician. I'm a vice president at Lynch Street Capital Partners. And the institutions I interview for um, are Dartmouth College. Um, I'm thinking about or about to start. I just graduated from Wharton um, in Penn Law. And so I will probably end up doing some form of interviewing uh, if possible. Wonderful to have you, Malcolm. Thank you so much. And yes, I mean, the joint programs are so interesting. I heard so many great things about whether it's MBA, MPH, MBA law. And so I might ask you something related to that. But why don't we kick it off by, you know, sharing with us for Dartmouth, what's been your favorite or even unique question to ask? And why, what are you looking for when you're asking that question? Yeah, so I, I definitely have two. Um, my first one is tell me about a project, paper, lab, basically an assignment you are especially proud of and why. It's a very open-ended question, as you can tell. Um, but I think it, it identifies a lot of things. One, you can tell what the student was engaged in as, a, as, a, you know, as an active high school student. Um, and you can tell what made them most proud about that accomplishment. And so for me, it's a way to highlight their focus on learning or their interest in learning at its core. Not necessarily what they got out of, you know, not necessarily what grade they got out of it, but specifically what they learned. And I feel like for Dartmouth, that's what they care about a lot. They care about like the passion, the zest for learning and the interest in it because it manifests itself or a liberal arts institution. So it manifests itself more broadly. Um, so that was one question. The other question, I'll keep it shorter, but um, it's how would those um, closest to you describe you? Ah, yes. That's definitely one of my favorite questions yeah. when I interview for Harvard College and also at the MBA level as well. Yeah. Wait, so, okay, so tell me, what are you looking for when you ask that question? I'm looking for introspection and I'm looking for depth of answer, honestly. So one word answers. I tend to not rate very highly um, because it doesn't really lend itself to someone being an introspective person. And again, I, I think it takes it back to my earlier one about learning and, and just interest in learning. Um, and so, yeah, I'm looking for how well have you built relationships and how do you think, you know, objectively, how would someone else describe you? And I, I love that because I've actually found some some very honest answers. And not all of them have to be positive either. I think some students think that they need to be positive. It's like, no, there are a lot of things we need to work on. Um, but if you can openly admit that and kind of tell me why, that goes a very long way. Yeah. So that's so interesting because you mentioned, you know, there is such a, such a sense of pressure of presenting yourself in a very positive light. Mm -hmm. And this certainly goes with what's your strength, what's your weakness or developmental needs, right? So mm -hmm. can you give me an example of, you know, this type of self-reflection? What would constitute as like a C level answer versus like a B versus like a wow answer? You are truly self-aware and reflective for you. Yeah, so some C answers have been like, oh, you know, my my um, family considers me nice and happy, right? And they just leave it at that and we move on to the next question. It's while honest and probably very accurate, it doesn't leave me wanting to know more. And I'll get to this kind of closer to the end, but yeah, it's like, I want, I want this one to be a dialogue, but two, to feel like I'm really getting to know you. And those two words, nice and happy, are just too generally descriptive, right? They could apply to actually a ton of people. But I think better answers are, here are things that, were, that are positive about me or, or unique about me that I think my family has recognized, or this is the role I play in my family, things like that, that are just like a little bit deeper, just a step below. <laughs> nice and happy. And then, yeah, my favorite ones are, yeah, those, those truly candid, like, hey, I grew up in this specific family situation. For example, I'm a twin, right? And so part of how other people would describe me naturally is the relationship I have with my twin. But that's external. Internal to the relationship that he and I have is a further, very different dynamic. And that's like, that kind of role that I play, sometimes good, sometimes bad, <laughs> I think is, is a much more, it leads for a much more interesting discussion. And I feel like I've walked away with a much better understanding of the student 
and the role that they could potentially play on Dartmouth's campus. Like, that's the thing that I try and think about is what role will you play on campus? Not just if you're smart. I mean, I kind of assume by being interested in the school, like even wanting to apply, going through the whole application process, there is some drive, there is some um, baseline intelligence. So how do we go past that? Yeah, that's so insightful. I love that. What role do you play uniquely? And I love that you mentioned, you know, internal versus external and reconciling those two together, you know, yeah. using your observation of yourself and how other people perceive you. Yeah. Um, that's very helpful. And, you know, what happens if, you know, you say that, yes, I am very smart, my my family describes me as smart and here's why and you know so forth the positive qualities which you know may very much be right so how can you highlight these strengths and what people describe you your accomplishments um going back to your questions right something you're proud of without sounding too like boastful or bragging that is a great question because it's something that it's it can be a tough line to toe right i'm so proud of all of the stuff that i've done in, in high school but I also don't want to just say, you know, just brag about it, right? That's not the uh, that's not the goal. So the way I have interviewed at Sash, the way I look for it, um, I want people to focus less on the grade that they got or sort of the title, right? The I was a state champion, you know, champion here, or I got an A or was on a dean's list here, and focus more on the learning that you took away from it and how it impacted you. Because I think that shows a level of maturity, right? It's, it's not just focused on this letter <laughs> or this title, but more so how you can incorporate it into your life um, or how you've already incorporated it into your life. And I think this goes back to the liberal arts education because we focus so much on learning and, and sort of interdisciplinary learning, how you incorporate that into other contexts, I think matters a lot. And so for me, when I'm listening to a student or an applicant, I listen to the learning. And, and how much they've been able to internalize that learning and in an ideal world, how much they've been able to apply it. Not everyone's had an opportunity to apply it, and I fully recognize that. Um, but yeah, focus more on, on that piece and, pretend, and potentially even the hard work that got you there, like the drive and sort of the, the commitment that got you there. I actually really love hearing the story. Mm. Uh, Sometimes it's like, hey, it was, it was, a, road, it was a, a journey of ups and downs that ultimately got me there. I think that tells a more compelling story than we won, we won nationals, we won states, or I got an A. Yeah, yeah. It really is that the journey that highlights the person in mm-hmm. terms of persistence, um, the yeah. story. I love that. And really the learning, right? It's, it's sort of, you know not everybody has the opportunity to really transfer these skills and apply their learning, but I think you can tag on to the question of why do you want to come here, right? Why are you applying here? What are you hoping to get out of it? What would you like to do while you're on campus? And I think those are great opportunities to showcase this thirst for learning and in very specific and compelling ways. Um, Yeah. So Overall, I guess, what makes an interview um, memorable or really like mm-hmm. impressive for you? Yeah, I actually love this question. Um, because, so I've stayed in touch with my uh, alumni interviewer from college. Um, and one thing, I reached out to her before I started interviewing. And I asked, hey, when you evaluated me, did you evaluate me based on how well I knew the school and you know all of the programs, if I could list them off? and all of that, right? She said, no. She said, it would be unfair of her to expect me to know the exact same that she did when she went to the school for four years. <laughs> and so what I, um, what I look for ultimately is whether you can add texture to the school experience. So is there something unique about you, whether it's how you digest information or it's how you analyze a situation and can synthesize some meaning or some takeaway from it. But basically, could I see you as a classmate? Could I see you adding something that I don't have myself and that I didn't see from my peers when I was a student too? That kind of unique element, I think if we all had that hat, we have such a really cool composition of students. Um, But it, it, it then allows me to 
not look and evaluate them based on how well they know Darvitt's campus or how well they know the programming. I'm, I will test, you know, you, you will ask some of those questions, but I more so want to know, would they end up adding some unique texture to the, to the, uh, to the class? And, I, and, and from that lens, it's actually really helped me just dialogue in a different way with the students and try and uncover like who they are as people as opposed to what they've accomplished. I love that. That's actually a really good tip for me as an interviewer, right? Yeah. Um, could I literally look next to me and imagine this person sitting next to me as a fellow yeah. classmate and truly having these engaging, you know, debates, right? Yeah. In some ways. Um, I really, really love that. Very cool. Um, one last question, since you did mention the joint program, um, yeah. how was the interviewing process for something like a joint program? Did you have to interview separately or how did that work? Yeah, so for, for my specific program at, um, at Penn, we did interview separately. So Wharton had its own specific, uh, actually very unique interview process. It's a, a, what's it called? It's called a TBD, team-based discussion. And so you are trying to accomplish a goal as a group of six, and it's meant to mirror the, um, the small group kind of setting, the team setting that, that we operate the MBA program in. And then separately, I had a one-on-one -on -one interview with the, the program director for the Master in Law program. Um, if you did do the joint JD MBA, I believe that interview is, is um, combined too. So they have like a combined one with the law school and then the, the team-based discussion as well for the MBA program. Ah, oh, very cool. Very interesting. Double the interview, double the fun. <laughs> double the fun. I, I think double the fun for sure. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time, Malcolm. Oh, thank you. Thank you for uh, just giving me the opportunity to, to share some of the thoughts and the experiences that I've had. Absolutely.